Hey, first AC. What's up? If you don't know what what I'm what I'm doing here, I'm turning the dial of the follow focus. If you're not a filmmaker, you don't know what I'm talking about. What's up? It's a culture detective here, investigating your favorite movies. And today I'm going to do a movie review on 2046. So right now it's 11:55 p.m. I'm really tired, so I'll keep this quick, short, and simple. But uh, yesterday. Uh, in the afternoon, um, I finished watching 2046, uh, written and directed by the one and only Hong Kong director Wong Kar Wai, also one of my favorite directors of all times. Now, um, flashback to June 12th of this year, when I had attended the HKOS gathering, which is one of the most uh, exciting and interesting days I've ever had in years. I've met a lot of fellow Hong Kongers, as well as other Macanese people who also love filmmaking. One of the people, a Macanese guy, asked me if I've seen all of Wong Kar Wai movies. And ashamed, I said, uh, no, I've only seen three. Chunking Express, Fallen Angels, and In the Mood for Love. And I love all three, especially Fallen Angels, being one of my favorite films of all times. So after that, I decided to watch more Wong Kar Wai. About a couple of months ago, or actually three months ago, I watched Happy Together, Chen Guang Zha Xi from uh, Wong Kar Wai in 1997, and I also really like it, but it's nothing like the other three films I've seen from him. And just very recently, I watched 2046, which is Wong Kar Wai doing a sci-fi film, except um, that's actually not the case here. So, uh, first of all, this movie is made in the year 2004, after In the Mood for Love, which is arguably the most influential and the most well-known film uh, Wong, uh, Wong Kar Wai has ever made internationally, okay? And, and emphasis on internationally. Locally in Hong Kong, In the Mood for Love is not as loved as Chunking Express, and Happy Together, and Days of Being Wild. Like, these are more well-known locally in Hong Kong. Um, but In the Mood for Love is a tremendous deal for Wong Kar Wai, because In the Mood for Love had high critical praise uh, from all around the world, and I think this film made Wong Kar Wai one best director in Cannes Film Festival making him the second Asian person to ever win Best Director in Cannes, which is a huge freaking deal. And the first Hong Konger to win a Cannes in the history of Cannes. So that is a really freaking huge deal. And since then, um, Wong Kar Wai films have gotten more and more abstract and strange. And again, there is a huge rift between pre-mood Wong Kar Wai and post-mood Wong Kar Wai. The styles are just very different. Now, both pre-mood and post-mood Wong Kar Wai are also really romantic and dreamy, but pre-mood is more um, dirty and more sensual and more all over the place and more formalist, while post-mood Wong Kar Wai is so much more elegant, still, quiet, and slow. But um, yeah, so essentially what I'm trying to say here is 2046 feels like an extension of In the Mood for Love. In fact, it is actually narratively a sequel to In the Mood for Love, but also not exactly, but also kind of exactly, if you know what I mean. I, I don't really know how to explain it. It's not exactly a sequel, but the main character is the same. It's Tony Leung under the same name. There are a lot of moments in 2046 that references back to In the Mood for Love, as if these movies exist in the same universe. But then at the same time, you also get the feeling that they don't really exist in the same universe. But anyways, 2046 is the most Wong Kar Wai film Wong Kar Wai has ever made. The same way The French Dispatch is the most Wes Anderson film Wes Anderson has ever made. This is Wong Kar Wai in his absolute freaking peak. Beautiful colors and production design, voyeuristic camera angles, frames within frames, 
a complete lack of plot structure. Smoking, lots of smoking, crying woman, lots of crying woman. Every single female character in this movie has cried, I think. Random shots in slow motion, dialogues in this movie make less and less sense. People speaking in multiple languages somehow being mutually intelligible, and the list goes on. This is as Wong Kar Wai Wong Kar Wai can ever get. And the fact that a movie like this is made, is given the green light, is just amazing. Because if Wong Kar Wai was just a newbie uh, when he made this film, it would never have been greenlit because it is too abstract, it is too weird. This might be the most abstract Wong Kar Wai film I've seen, and a lot of directors do this as well. Like a lot of art house directors get more and more artsy as their filmography moves along. But uh, speaking of multiple languages, this movie has tons of huge names. Of course, it has the biggest Hong Kong stars, Tony Leung as the main character. You do not mess with such a huge name. He is unmistakably amazing in this film. We also have Karina Lau. We have Fei Wong, she's back. On top of that, we have Chinese superstars Gong Li and Zhang Ziyi, who are both huge, huge, huge names in the Chinese film industry. industry. And then on top of that, we have Japanese superstar Kimura Takuya as one of the characters in this movie. So we have Cantonese, Mandarin, occasionally Japanese, being thrown around multiple times. There's even a moment in this movie where Thai is being spoken. So they're all just thrown around randomly and all the characters are somehow mutually intelligible, which is really funny because it reminds me of how whenever I see um, uh, a Chinese friend of mine um, in my college, who, who's also a film production major, uh, we usually just communicate in English because I'm not that good in Mandarin and she doesn't speak Cantonese at all. Um, but, uh, somehow in the world of Wong Kar Wai, no matter what language you speak, love transcends language. But, um, yeah, let me just say that, and please forgive me for saying this, but 2046 is my least favorite Wong Kar Wai film I've seen so far. Yeah. The other four films I've seen from him are all amazing, so maybe that's why. Now, this film is not bad. In fact, I think it's pretty good, but I think the ca uh, casual average moviegoer, in fact, your average art house film goer will probably not be a huge fan of this film. The first half of this movie is kind of underwhelming for me. I almost considered giving this film a 7 out of 10 because the first half is basically in the mood for love, but way less engaging. Tony Leung and Zhang Ziyi, um, basically dominates the first half of 2046 and they don't have much chemistry in my opinion and then we have the issue that is this movie has a lot of sex scenes now it makes sense that a romantic film has sex scenes but what makes Wong Kar Wai such a special romance director is that he's always able to make the most intense the most passionate romance ever without any sex without any kisses or even I love you's like in the mood for love doesn't feature a single kiss or a single I love you but it's one of the most intensely romantic films of all times but seeing so many sex scenes in this movie almost gratuitously pretty much devalues the romance in this movie unfortunately Another thing is that Tony Leung's character in this movie is a lot more unlikable. It's the same character with In the Mood for Love, but it's he's also like a different character now. Um, he just acts differently. He speaks differently. He's promiscuous. He looks for girls. And he just goes around. He's way less grounded than he was in In the Mood for Love. So um, that's not very great. However, what really won me over is the second half. I think the second half of the film is a lot dreamier. And um, so 2046 is not actually a sci-fi. When I went in the movie, I thought it's a sci-fi. And I was genuinely curious, like, oh my god, Wong Kar Wai, sci-fi? That's amazing. But turns out 
This movie mostly takes place in the late 1960s about a writer who's writing a sci-fi book about 2046. And so we don't really get to see 2046. Rather, we see the writer writing 2046, except for a segment in the film where we actually entered the book. That part is amazing. It's really interesting. It's really engaging. The cinematography really shines. That scene is also a lot slower. Um, and I also really love how this movie deals with time. You get these intertitles one hour later, 10 hours later, 100 hours later, 1,000 hours later, and how the characters stay in the same position throughout so many days and hours and years. And it's just really interesting how this movie deals with time. Um, but... Um, I also really love how this movie deals with writing and artistic expression because the main character of the film is a writer and when he, Tony Leung's character, wrote 2046, he basically used, turned people he knows in real life into his own characters and that's something I can really really relate to unfortunately. Uh, I do that all the time. I hate writing characters out of thin air. I always base it off of someone I know in real life. So um, that's really interesting. Um, this movie is also surprisingly political um, with the mentions of the Red Hong Kong protests of 1967. And then of course the movie title 2046 is kind of like a reference to you know the last year in Hong Kong supposed 50 year um, of self-autonomy before China completely takes over in 2047, but uh, I guess that doesn't matter anymore now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, for better or worse, this film is definitely kind of political. So yeah, it's pretty interesting, and um, I do still think that the first half is kind of underwhelming. Maybe I'll like it more on a rewatch, but um, yeah, and then again, it's really dreamy, but I think partially it's because you really can't get a hold of the geography of the film. 95% of the scenes in this film take place in an interior setting, in a very tight space, usually frames within frames, so you don't see a lot. So you see characters and you don't really know where they are. And given how structuralist the plot is, you don't really know what's going on either. And then whenever we have exterior scenes, it's either the same few sets you've already seen in, in The Mood for Love, the 1960s nostalgia sets, or it's crappy CGI. But then you kind of for, forget, forgive that it's crappy because hey, it's Wong Kar Wai. It's intentionally crappy, right? So, uh, yeah. I don't know, man. I'm giving 2046 by Wong Kar Wai a strong 7 to a light 8 out of 10. Have you seen it? What are your thoughts? Comments below. Let me know and subscribe. One more and thanks for watching. I also watched RRR last night, um, more like yesterday afternoon, and it's, um, I'll review tomorrow. I don't have the energy to review today. I'll review tomorrow.